Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Jose Soto, a Global Swine Technical Manager at Alltech. So Jose, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Absolutely. Hey, Clayton. Thank you for having me. So first, uh, I am originally from Chile, where I received a uh, undergrad training in ag science and graduate training in ag economics. I uh, received a PhD in swine nutrition from Kansas State uh, University, where I work extensively around amino acid nutrition and dietary energy economic modeling. Before joining Altec, I worked for three of the top 10 uh, swine production systems uh, within the U.S., particularly in R&D in production operations capacity. Uh, and currently, I work, as, a, as you mentioned, as a global swine technical manager for, for Altec. And my responsibilities are primarily around the R&D technical services, and I do a little bit of con uh, nutritional consulting as well. Gotcha. So I understand Altec's been doing some work on feed additives to improve sow productivity. So what kind of things have you guys been working on? Um, excellent. So um, we have been devoted uh, quite some time to try to understand if we can influence sow throughput. So just to give you a little bit of background, uh, we have seen tremendous improvements around site productivity, right? The, the sow throughput has increased dramatically uh, over the last few decades, right? Is that associated to genetics, uh, nutrition, management, health? I think that we are seeing much larger productivity in cells. And that is primarily driven by litter size. Um, I, I think that uh, if, if just, just to put it in context, if you think that at a nucleus level, we can increase the litter size by 0.3 on a yearly basis, um, over 10 years, we have seen uh, an increase of three picks per litter. So tremendous uh, progress around uh, sow uh, productivity. But with that, with that, we have also seen that the farrowing length has, has increased, right? And, and again, just to put it in perspective, if you think about the birthing uh, interval, it takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. So to have a litter with 16 pigs, uh, we are talking about a five-hour farrowing process. So certainly, as farrowing uh, length has increased, we have also observed a much higher incidence of stillborn uh, pigs, right? So I, I think that um, the, the farrowing overall is a heavily energy-dependent uh, process. And I think that uh, fortunately, over the last few years, we have seen research that has shown us that certain strategies help to reduce this farrowing length such as uh, reducing feeding intervals or the use of fiber, which can, can uh, reduce this whole uh, farrowing uh, length. In addition to it, we have also learned through our R&D, sow R&D program, that we can also influence the length of this, uh, of this farrowing process with the use of fat-coated anionic salts which is something that we have taken from the dairy uh, industry, and with the use of such compound, we can actually reduce the farrowing length, and with that, reduce the uh, stillbirth incidence that we are observing ramping up over the last uh, few years. Gotcha. So have you guys done any um, research trials on this to kind of test its efficacy at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. See, so uh, most recently... Uh, we uh, conducted a, a study where we tried to characterize uh, not only the incidence associated to the steelbirds, but also some metabolic changes uh, that we see as a result of the use of fat-coated anionic salt, such as reductions in pH and in urine, and also um, uh, bacterial counts in urine uh, as well. So uh, what we did in this specific trial we fed sows uh, during pre farrow specifically for three days before with such product to actually assess the impact specifically around uh, stillbirths. 
So the way that uh, we we did this, we supply uh, this product as a top dress. We put it on top of uh, the feeding of the salves, uh, again, for three days uh, pre ferro and we immediately collected data around stillbirths and also some of the metabolic changes that I was uh, discussing uh, previously. So in, in terms of the, uh, the results uh, we saw is first, we observed uh, a, a, a reduction in stillbirth uh, incidence from a 9.8 to an 8% uh, stillborn expressed as a, as a percent of total born or a 20% uh, reduction in, in stillbirth. So something that we validate uh, based on previous uh, work that we have conducted in, in commercial scale, scale um, trials. So another, another thing that we have been able to characterize before this, the trial that I'm describing is that we were a actually able to reduce effectively the length of this spiraling process we have documented we have documented in uh, 1.4 hour less uh, with the use of such uh, compounds. So we think that as we reduce the spheroid length, we have this um, influence on less less incidence of, of, of steel bird pigs, right? So going back to the to the study that that we conducted, uh, Clayton, uh, we did observe. Uh, a reduction in urine pH, as well as a reduction in bacterial counts in, in urine uh, specifically. And why this is relevant? Uh, first, what we think that is happening is as you provide this type of products, we are able to uh, lower pH in, in to offset this lowering of pH what, what the animal does is mobilize calcium directly from the bone, and this ionized calcium is used to uh, increase the muscle contraction, and with that, uh, favor the whole farrowing uh, process. In, in addition, also, uh, not in this trial, but in previous work, we have also observed a livability improvement that we think that is related back to the uh, lesson bacterial load that we observe uh, in urine, uh, Clayton. So that is, in essence, what we have learned uh, most recently, but certainly we continue to engage in commercial scale trials to validate uh, this, this response. Gotcha. And I can imagine this has a um, some sort of impact um, on labor costs, obviously, with the reduced fairing duration. Um, but how does this... Um, how much does this really, in terms of economics or numbers or whatever, how much does this affect the total number of pigs born alive then? Certainly. So um, what, what we are impacting directly, and this has been the most consistent response, is certainly reducing that, the, the steel bird pigs incidence, uh, right? In previous trial, in including this trial, we have reduced anywhere from 20 to 30% the stillbirths. So that means an increase in born alive, right? So in, in numerical terms, we have seen anywhere from a 0 0.3 to 0 0.35 more born alive pigs, right? So that is in essence the benefit that, that the product uh, bring to, to the table. And going back to your question about labor, we also think that we are influencing the times that a monitor actually sleep that animal. So there is, there is no as much need of human intervention throughout the whole farrowing process because of the use of such a uh, product, uh, Clayton. Like you, we know feeding pigs is a challenge. At Alltech, our proven specialty ingredients work to solve your toughest challenges. Whether it's combating mycotoxins, increasing feed efficiency, or just getting a few extra pigs per litter, Alltech's full line of trace minerals, enzymes, prebiotics, and other specialty ingredients are backed by science and real customer success. Start seeing maximized health, sustainability, and profitability in your pigs, and more free time for you by visiting alltech.com pig today. And then, so you've mentioned a couple other um, things about how you plan to do more research. 
um, on this. So what would you say then um, from a research standpoint would then be the next steps for your team? Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, uh, up until today, the way that we actually utilize uh, this product is, is in pre for the three days pre at a rate of 25 grams per day, right? But uh, what, what I think that needs to be done is to assess uh, different length of supplementation, perhaps beyond the three days, or being able to increase the concentration that we supply of the product to assess if we can actually increase the magnitude of, of those responses. Uh, so those are the things that certainly we are going after. And as I mentioned before, we continue to engage with larger systems and commercial research that actually is able to show us not only perhaps the benefits on reducing steelbirds, but perhaps this livability piece that we think that perhaps we're influencing as well as, as described before. Like, gotcha. Well, I think that's all we ha- all the time that we have for today. But thank you again, Jose, for coming on the show and sharing all that data with us. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swannutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.